Good afternoon. Here we are. It's been a long time and we're back to cooking again. We've moved from the from the beach and now we're in the mountains of Arizona. So today I'm going to put together something I read in the paper. Uh, American barbecue rib recipe. I'll show you how to do the rub, give you all the ingredients, then the barbecue sauce, and then we'll put the whole process together. So we'll see you in a little bit with all of the ingredients. We're back. Hey. All right, so I've got all the ingredients for the rub. I'll describe them, I'll show them to you, and then we'll just put it all together in a little bowl. So as my lovely wife and director and assistant looks, here's the first set of ingredients. We've got New Mexico chili powder. We have paprika. So it's two, two teaspoon, two teaspoon, and one teaspoon of kosher salt. All right, and the next bunch is uh, two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of pepper, two teaspoons of garlic powder. All right, the next and last one is one. One teaspoon of cayenne, sage, and what's the other one? Thyme. As my wife says, I like to say thyme because it's got an H in it, but I've been told that I'm wrong and I'm just a dumb Belgian. All right, so now you throw all of this stuff together. Bam! Oh, I shouldn't do that. That's Emerald's thing. Into the bowl and mix it all together. And then a little bit later, I'll come back on and we'll show you how to rub the ribs and everything else. But again, God bless our troops. Thank you. Hey, back. Now for the barbecue sauce. Okay, a little correction before we go to the barbecue sauce. I, uh, I was incorrect in some of my measurements for the rub. Instead of uh, two teaspoons of garlic powder, it's two tablespoons two tablespoons of onion powder. The rest of it is teaspoon. The salt, I use one teaspoon because I don't like to, too much salt. So it's supposed to be one tablespoon. Now for the rub. I mean for the barbecue sauce, forgive me. Uh, we start with a third cup of ketchup. Any kind you want. A quarter cup of apple cider vinegar a two tablespoons of uh, lemon juice, two tablespoons of Worcestershire, pronounce that, and two tablespoons of uh, soy sauce, quarter cup of butter, never have enough butter, and here in this little thing here I have two tablespoons of yellow mustard and it calls for Louisiana hot sauce but I basically use Tabasco's Chipotle with a little bit of Frank's hot sauce in there. Any hot sauce will do. All right, so what you do next is you put all the ingredients in here into a nice little, little pot. You'll put it on the stove top and cook it till it thickens. And that's about it. And then you use that as a barbecue sauce and you'll see the process later on where you use it. All right, we'll see you in a little bit when I start rubbing the ribs and getting them ready. Hey, I'm back. All right, now we did the dry rub, the American dry rub. We did the barbecue sauce there on the stove. Now we've got to have a braising liquid. And uh, what it's going to call for is basically six tablespoons of brown sugar. It calls for two cloves of garlic. I think I'd put four or six. You never have too, too much garlic. It calls for a church key. Oh, for you younger, this is a church key. Bottle opener. <sighs> from Stone Mountain, Georgia. And then, of course, some beer. This is Hangar 24 Orange Wheat Beer out of Redlands, California. It's pretty good, I think. <sighs> yeah, better stop while I'm ahead. Pour the beer into the sugar and into the garlic and mix that well. And then that will go in with the ribs when we get them ready. So the ribs have to be rubbed yet and refrigerated, so we're going to put this in the refrigerator so it will fester a little bit, you know, get good, get happy. Are you not missing a, an ingredient? An in oh! <laughs> Thank you, Director! <laughs> a little quarter cup of soy sauce. Here we go. Now we're complete. I think there's a song like that. Anyway, this is it. 
Simple, mix it together, put it back in the fridge until you're ready to use it with the ribs. That's a different process. So we'll see you in a little bit, okay? Hey, are you bored yet? Here we go. The uh, braising liquid is, is relaxing. So all of this recipe, uh, all of these recipes and the amounts is for probably three racks of rib. We're only gonna do uh, one and a half because for my wife and I, we don't need that much more. So here's what we do next. Uh, just a little bit of rub on each of the ribs, uh, probably, I don't know, maybe a, a tablespoon per, per rack. So just rub that in. What's that you say? Oh, rub harder. Okay, here we are. These doggone ribs. Okay, now I'll turn it over. See the nice meat on that? I think that's going to be delicious. Okay, uh-oh. Can't cross-contaminate. You could give a little plug here. I'll allow you. A little plug? For Mr. Costco. Rips. Yeah, we got these from Costco. They, they got pretty good meats. You know. So... Again, a little rub on, on all of this, and I think, I think the secret with rubs is to do what it says, and is to rub it in. Um, you know, sometimes I, on these cooking shows, I see they just put this stuff on, they don't do any good rubbing of the meat. You know, I think, I think that's how it gets into the tissue and stuff. I may be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. I saw a good old boy from the south do ribs one time, and he he professed that rubbing that stuff in there. Okay, let me just wash my hands real quick, and then the next step is pretty simple, really. Uh, yeah, well, this is a long process, but you know it's fun. So now, piece of foil, shiny side down. Put your ribs in there and cover them up. They're going to go in the refrigerator for about an hour. Now, you can do it an hour, you can do six hours, you can do them overnight. Uh, I think it's all good. So, I'm going to finish doing this, put them in the refrigerator, we'll come back at the grill, okay? Here we are, we're back. So, the ribs have been uh, basting in the American rub. Uh, Zambrowski, are you paying attention to this? I'm not going to repeat myself. All right, here we go. So I took the uh, braising liquid. It's been sitting around, festering, uh, getting good. You see the garlic floating in there and the beer and all of that. So we'll pour a little bit of that into each one of the packages. Did you have to heat it before? Yeah, we'll for about one minute in the microwave oven. So you pour some of that in there. Where are the ribs? They're inside the foil. You can't see them, they're hiding. They're a little bit shy. So I'm putting that braising liquid in there with all the garlic and stuff. I'll probably use it a little more than I should. And uh, just swish that around real good like that. Just get it all happy. Okay, so your foil is basically like a little boat. It's holding all of this liquid in there. So I'm going to close it with just a, a bit of an opening at the top and see what's already happening. This one is leaking, which is not good. So you always have an extra. Um, where's that son of a gun leaking? Oh, I see that leak. All right, so what you do is very simple. Get another piece of foil. Zambrowski, shiny side down. Okay, so I'm going to put this in just another piece of foil. Actually, I'm going to take that rib out of there, the liquid and all. See, this is good that this has happened because if it happens to you at home, you're going to go, hey, you never said anything on the video about that. So here's, I'm replacing it. There you go, just like that. Very simple. Okay, so I'm rewrapping this rib. I've got the liquid in there, the braising liquid. Make a little tent out of it. And, and what I'm going to do for protection, 
Oh, this thing is. Now I've got another leak. I'm just full of leaks. All right. See, you always come prepared. So now, I think my buddy Zombrowski was telling me the other day he had to do three ribs or three pieces of foil but every time you put the foil around it it punctured the hole so to prevent this from happening I'm going to double foil right Ray? that's the way we do it and you're kind of careful because I guess those rib bones are yes brother this is Zembrowski talking uh, yes brother all right, well, I, I was thinking about putting some blueberries in there, but probably not. So, okay, so we're going to double foil them all like that, and we're making little, little pots. Just like that, and need one more piece of foil. Where is that foil? Stepping into the pantry. Guys, getting a good view of our home. If you've never been to Prescott, it's a good place to be. All right, so done, and uh, we'll meet you guys outside. That's the next thing we're going to do. So.